So this month, we are launching a new theme, and it's called, Bro, Can I Wash Your Car? Bro, can I wash your car? That's the, you know, if there's one thing that I don't enjoy, <laughs> and that is washing a car. There's just too much to it. I'd rather take it through the drive through But I've, in, I've entitled my sermon, Bro, Can I Wash Your Car? So our, our pastor isn't here this morning, but he is uh, ministering in Cartonville Connections Church. So pray for him. He will be back tonight in full force to be with us. And um, we, just, we just bless him and we just pray for him. Amen. So this morning, as I've said, I am sharing the word, bro, can I wash your car? And today we are going to reflect on the call to serve God by serving others the way Jesus shows us how to do it. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Father, that this morning we get to praise you, honor you, and glorify you. Thank you, Father, that today through the word, I pray that you would use me as a vessel fit to carry this word, Lord. Father, I pray that this word would impact our lives and, and, and almost like push us, Father. Move us and shake us to do greater and better things for you and to live our lives in and through you, Father God, for you, Jesus. Um, and I just pray, Father, that today will be a significant day in our lives, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and do a new thing in our hearts. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read in Matthew 25 verse 40. And it says, Jesus declares, whatever you did for the one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. That is huge. Whatever you did for your brother or your sister, you did for me. So we are going to, we are going to explore how we can cultivate a heart of service that is motivated by gratitude, and it's driven by love. Amen? You need to have to love it. You need to be passionate about it, and you need to want to do it. Amen? I want to share a story with you, a special story, and it happened many years ago in my life. I went to a small church, and it was my first time, and even though it was small, I was welcomed with a smile on someone's face for, and, and kind and friendly. And when I walked into that place as a new person, it made me feel welcomed. I felt like I belonged. And that is so important for us. Amen. That church taught me something important about helping others. You don't always need the big and extravagant things to make a difference. Sometimes it's in the small, in those small acts of kindness and maybe a friendly hello that changes that person's life forever. That is what is important in our act of service. So the church I'm speaking about is this church. This church taught me what it was not to despise small beginnings, to serve with all my heart and to serve with a heart that is drawn to what Jesus taught me as an example. Amen. Before architects design any new building, they ask many questions. If any of you have had an encounter with an architect, and we love them, but they ask a lot of questions and they want to know every detail. So they ask firstly, what are you using it for? What are you going to use this building for that you are wanting to design? What is the intended function? And then what happens is, is that then that it determines what form of building they will design for you once they know what it's going to be used for. And before God created you, he decided what role are you going to play in the world? Or on earth today? What are you going to do? He plans how exactly you are going to serve him. And then he shapes you for that service. Amen. You are the way you are because you were made. We were made for a specific ministry. We were not made to simply exist. We were made to do. Amen. 
The Bible says we are God's workmanship created, listen to this, in Christ Jesus to do good works. What did it say? To do good works. You are handcrafted work of art. You are not an assembly line of a product being made without thought. No, you are custom designed. You are one of a kind. You are God's masterpiece. God deliberately shaped us and he formed us to serve him in a way that makes your ministry unique. Amen. He carefully, carefully mixed that DNA cocktail to make you. And so David praised God for this incredible personal attention to detail. You made all my delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together. Thank you, Lord, in my mother's womb. Thank you that you made me wonderfully complex. And we as a people are complex. Amen. Your workmanship, he says, is marvelous. Ethel Waters said, God doesn't make junk. We are here to live out our purpose. There's a book I want to recommend, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Go read that book if you want to understand what purpose means. Our purpose is to serve like Jesus with humility, with love, and with kindness. In Mark 10, 45, it says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Back in Jesus' time, the people used to wear, um, they used to wear sandals and they would walk on the sandy road. And of course, their feet would get really, really dirty. And so they would need a pedicure every day. So from walking on those dusty roads, normally servants would wash the guests' feet. But in the upper room, there were no servants. And Jesus, Jesus being the leader he was, he washes their feet. And does he expect anything in return? No, he doesn't expect anything in return. All he wanted was to show them how important it was to help others. Even though Jesus was very special, he still chose to serve others. Do you notice how intentional Jesus was in whatever he did? Amen. So he teaches them a valuable lesson of what it means to be kind and to serve with humility. He wanted us to learn from his example and help each other just like he helped his disciples. John 13, 15 says, For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Jesus' love is so deep that he gave his life for us. And through that, he wanted us to see how he helps us in the best way he can, and that was to serve others. Are there, the question I ask today, are there enough people to wash feet? Are you served here or are you serving? So at Connections Church, so that you know off the bat that we are not a cruise liner. It's not going to happen. We are working ship. We come together and we work together to make this work. Amen. So I want us to explore the next five points that illustrate what it means to serve like Jesus. Number one, serving gives us purpose. Amen. Like I said, we're not here just to exist. Each and every one of us needs a purpose. Amen. God made us that way. Mark 8.35 says, Forever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. Rick Warren says, Until you learn how to serve, you're not really living. How strong is that? You're just existing. May you, make life, uh, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give away. Amen. The, there's another quote by, by Mahatma Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. I want us to imagine 
an orchestra playing a beautiful song. Who's had the privilege of actually listening to an orchestra? It can go horribly wrong if you don't play together. Amen? And so each of them has a part to play in making this angelic sound. And each of us has a special role to play in making the world a better place. Imagine if each and every one of us worked together, what a difference we could make. Amen? And when we help someone, it's like playing your part in that orchestra, that orchestra of kindness. It makes us feel happy inside. But can you imagine what it does for that person? Amen? So let's follow Jesus' example and serve others. Let's serve others with love, with compassion, with kindness. And then you can add your beautiful note. Can you imagine that? All of us coming together, adding our beautiful note to the symphony of life. Hey, can you imagine that? You can personally serve with purpose by taking the time. Just take the time to serve someone by maybe just sitting with them and listening to what they have to say. Maybe they're going through a difficult or rough time. And just maybe you need to go and sit with someone in an emergency room as they wait to hear if their child's going to be okay. Number two, serving like Jesus. Matthew 20, 28. Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is what Rick Warren says as well. If you don't learn how to serve others, you'll never grow to spiritual maturity. In fact, you'll be a spiritual baby your entire life. We don't want to be spiritual babies all our life. We want to grow spiritually. Amen. Corrie Ten Boom says, the measure of life after all is not its duration, but its donation. Amen. I want us to imagine a sculptor. He's got this piece of marble, and now he's sculpting it into a masterpiece. And through the act of serving, we are transformed. Because we serve, we are transformed into the likeness of Christ. And then doing that, you reflect the love and the compassion and humility to the world. Number three, maximum impact. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always, abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. We are not just doing it for the sake of doing it. We are doing it to make a difference. Rick Warren also says, if you want to make an impact and leave a legacy, the highest use of your time is to serve God by serving others. Your service to the Lord is never wasted. Mother Teresa says, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. Amen. And so here's another picture. Picture a gardener tending his garden and, and paying attention to detail. I have told you before that plants are not my thing. So they're definitely going to die under my hands. But someone who looks after their garden, plants with care and dedication, just the same, we can dedicate our lives to serving God through serving others and paying attention to the detail. And with, delic you know, with really dedicating ourselves to that service. Amen. So serve God by serving others. Every moment becomes that opportunity. Every moment that you do this is an opportunity to sow seeds for eternity. You are sowing seeds into someone's life. And it's a seed of love. It's a seed of kindness. It's a seed of humility. It's a seed of compassion that you can plant and it's for eternity. Use your time to serve others. It means something to someone. I remember when I took a day off and I helped someone move. And it was only a few hours. And, and you won't believe what a difference it made in her life. It helped her to understand that, you know, I'm here to support you, whether you like it or not. I'm here to give you my time, whether you like it or not. 
And it helped her to also understand that she's not doing life alone. Amen. We need community. We need each other to make a difference. Matthew 20, 26 says, but among you, it will be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. True greatness. This is the secret to greatness. Sorry, number four. The true greatness comes from the servanthood, not from living for yourself. The greatest leaders are those who serve the most. The greatest leaders are those who serve the most. You see, God will just slowly but surely, you'll be raised up to do greater things. Start with a little and then he'll give you so much more. So in Matthew 23, 11, it says, the greatest among you will be your servant. I want you to, to, to listen to this. A humble servant, a servant normally is not noticed. They go unnoticed in the world. But does that matter? It doesn't matter. I want you to know that that servant has the key to greatness. Why? Because in the kingdom of God, greatness is not found in the position that I hold or in the authority that I hold, but in that act of selfless service that I, that I reflect. And that's the heart of Jesus. Number five is your reward. And we want to know, sure, with all this hard work, am I going to be rewarded somewhere? Mark 10, verse 29 to 31 says, Jesus said, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Your reward, guess where your reward is? In heaven. So ultimately, your real boss is Jesus, and he will reward you one day for everything you've done for him. That's a guarantee, a quote by Rick Warren. Another quote by Paul Sherry, he says, the only way to multiply happiness is to divide it. Think of a runner. He's pressing on towards the goal, and he just wants his reward. You can think about it. How many kilos do we run in a, in a marathon? I'm not going to say 96 or 90, I don't know. But after a comrade's marathon, I want a reward if I finish that. In the same way, our labor of love in serving God will be richly rewarded in heaven. Amen. Every, every act of kindness Every sacrifice that we make in his name will be remembered and it will be honored by God in eternity. Amen. Being the least when you serve others is a lesson that I had to learn. So I, um, during a community cleanup event at the Homestead Lake, um, I served with a, a group of people and we, we were picking up rubbish and it's good. It's good for us to come together and make a difference. And so as I went down to pick up the litter, I realized, hey, I'm around people here that are the same. It isn't about who I am, where I come from, what I do. So what? We are here together to make a difference. Amen? And so people would come up to us and ask you, what are you, you know, who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, well, we're picking up rubbish. Um, and thank you for cleaning our park. And this was one life being changed at a time. And those who are serving, for those who are serving, as well as for those um, who are doing it. Every time we do something to make a difference, it changes our life. It chips away at the selfish in our lives, and we become selfless in our lives. Amen? Isaiah 43 verse 1, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he formed you, Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Not only did God shape you before your birth, he planned. He planned every day of your life. Because he wants you to be transformed into what he wants you to do. David continues, every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. This means that nothing 
that happens in your life is insignificant. Nothing that we do is insignificant, especially if we're doing it for God. God will use you. He will mold you for your ministry, and he will make you into what he needs you to be so that you can serve him. God never wastes anything. He never wastes. He is intentional about what we are here for. Amen. He would not give you, he would not give you abilities, interests, talents, gifts, personality, life experience, unless he intended to use it for his glory. Amen. So we need to embrace that. We need to embrace these factors in our life and make it a part of who we are. We need to think differently about what serving is about. Let's think about it the way God wants us to think about it. Serving with our whole hearts, with our whole everything, everything serving God. Romans 12 verse 11, never be lazy but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I want you to know, that I, my life was transformed when I started serving Jesus. Absolutely transformed. It changed my life so much that I can't live my life without serving now. And we've got to be at that point where I, I want to. Are you driven? Do you need to be pushed a little bit? Does that enthusiasm need a bit of a boost? God can do that for you. Amen. So never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically, Romans 12, verse 11. As we go from this place today, may we be inspired to serve God. Guys, we're, not serve, we're serving God and we're serving others. Amen? Serve with your whole heart. Serve with your, all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, knowing that if you serve others, we serve Jesus. Amen. So let's go with a renewed passion. Let's go with a renewed zeal. Let's be enthusiastic and eager to make a difference. Let's be the hands and feet of Jesus so that we can make a difference and bring glory to Jesus. Amen. My application to you today is find somewhere to wash feet in the church. Find somewhere. Whether it be in kids church, dream team, worship team, media, sound team, production team, teen church. Hey, hands. We need hands. Amen. Find a place where you can make a difference and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Amen. Would you stand with me? Put your hand on your heart, please. And we're going to pray today. And I'm going to ask that God will just change us from the inside. Because it really needs to be a change of heart. Amen. Father, we just come before you right now. And we say, thank you, Lord, that today, today, Father, we choose. Because this is a choice that we make. We choose, Father, to serve you with our whole hearts. We choose to serve you with our soul. We choose to serve you with all our hearts, with our minds, with our strength. We choose, Father, to do this. We choose to be your hands and your feet, Lord Jesus. We choose to be different people, Father God, serving you as we serve others, Father. Thank you, Jesus, that what we do, Father God, is not insignificant. Thank you that each life here, Father, in front of me is not insignificant. You have created us for greater, for better, for huge, Lord. And you asking us, Father, to serve you, serve your church, Lord. And so, Father, I just say thank you. Thank you, Father, that our reward is in heaven. Thank you, Father, that as we plant seeds in people's lives, Father, that through this, they might just come to know you. Through this, Father, their lives can be changed and transformed. Through this, Father, they will find their purpose. Through this, Father God, we can make a difference. We can make a difference, Father, one life at a time. And I praise you and I honor you. I say thank you that we can do this. That you would 
you would stir in us, Father. Move us and shake us to fulfill that purpose that you've called us to. I pray this in Jesus' name. I want us to, you can lower your hands. I want us to close our eyes, keep our eyes closed. This is a different call. This is a different call. You may be here today. And you may be searching for a while for a sense of meaning and purpose. And we've been talking about purpose today. A purpose in our lives. The truth is meaning and purpose are only, only found in Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to bless you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Today, you can make that decision to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This decision will start a journey towards knowing God and fulfilling your pur the purpose you have been born to fulfill. Jesus says in his Bible, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So if you confess your sin to God, he will forgive you. This gift of new life in Jesus is free, but it does require that we make a decision to lay down our lives and pick up our cross. Ask yourself this question today. Ask yourself this question today. If you had to die tonight, where would you wake up to spend eternity? If you're not sure, you can be sure. The Bible says in John 1 verse 12, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You have the right to become a child of God today. If you want to receive Jesus and believe in him, then you need to lay down your life. We need to lay down our lives and pick up our cross. If there is anyone here today that wants to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day. Today is the day. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to ask that you just raise your hand where you are. This is between you and God. This has nothing to do with the person next to you. We don't want to embarrass you. Our team will come around and they'll just place something in your hand. Don't be alarmed by that. But this is between you and God. God wants, Jesus wants a relationship with you. And he's saying, yeah, we go. He has a free gift. I give it to you. Salvation. I'm going to count to three. One, two, three. You can raise your hand right now. Thank you. Thank you. We see those hands. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We're going to pray this as a church together. Father, we thank you for your great love. Your word says that if we would say with our mouths that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we would be saved. I do that now. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, and I believe that He is alive. I choose to serve Him by surrendering every part of my life to Him today. Help me to know You more and to live a life that pleases You. I thank You that as I've done this, I've chosen to follow Jesus I am now saved. Heaven is my home. God is my Father. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Can we celebrate those that gave their life to Jesus this morning?